Dr. Moser, what are some of the biggest myths around donating a kidney? Oh, there's, there's so many myths when it comes to organ donation and transplantation to start with. I think specific to living donation, the commonest one I hear is that somehow people think donating a kidney will shorten their life, will change their life in a, in a bad way forever. And that's really not, not what we want. That's not what we've seen uh, in Canada and around the world. They've studied thousands, if not tens of thousands of people who are living donors. They followed them for 30 years after. They found very, very little difference at all in a person's quality of life, in their medical problems, in their kidney function. Obviously, we have to do our homework and, and select carefully. We have to make sure we choose donors that are very healthy with no obvious risk for kidney disease. Uh, but if we do that, no, it should have absolutely no effect on your life. Um, and uh, in fact, once you've recovered from the surgery, it should be possible to get back to a completely normal life. So once they donate their kidney and they're eligible to go home, do they have any follow-up appointments? Uh, that's right, uh, follow-up is for life, but I think most people should be seeing their family docs once a year for routine histories and physicals. And the follow-up after kidney donation is really not that much, really not that onerous. It's not that different from a regular annual history, physical, labs, ear analysis, things like that. Wow, that's very encouraging. <laughs> Dr. Moser, I'm just wondering if you could explain or go through the process about becoming a living donor. Um, like, what does it all, all include? Well, it, it is a process that can honestly take from three to six months. So it does involve a lot of testing. We need to make sure that we are not putting donors at any excessive risk. You know, we want to identify any problems that they might have uh, down the line, perhaps. And, uh, you know, the sad truth is, or, you know, it is what it is, is that about 50% of the people who present as potential living donors, we find something along the testing to, to rule them out. And that might be early on at the testing questionnaire, that very first phone call. It might be in some of the early blood tests and it might not be until that very last CAT scan that tells us all about the anatomy in there. So uh, we do have to make sure we're very careful. The last thing in the world we want is for somebody who's doing such a great deed as donating a kidney. We really don't want anything bad to come of that. So unfortunately, I didn't have a living kidney donor step up, but I've heard a lot of people that have received the gift of life from a family member or a loved one, uh, that sometimes they don't know if their family member even stepped up to donate an organ or to donate their kidney until they actually get the yes and then they tell their family as a big surprise. So they, is that to be, is, that, is it a confidential process? Sure, ab absolutely. Uh, as a transplant program, we need to at all times keep the recipient sort of separate in our minds and our charts and that from the, the potential donors. And you're right, sometimes people have very secretly, very anonymously, uh, without telling their family members. Um, they've, they've come forward as potential donors, they've done, gone through the whole workup, and when everything works out, then it's a, it's a great surprise to, to the recipient. And, uh, but in the meantime, things can be very confidential. Every family has a different approach. Um, and the other thing, of course, along those same lines is just making that phone call does not bind you to anything, you know, as a potential living donor. Uh, there's there's the opportunity to back out at any time. You could be done all of the testing. Everything might be just perfect. And if something doesn't feel right, it's okay. You know, if it doesn't feel right to the donor, uh, it's just fine to back out at any time. Can more than one family member or loved one step up to be a donor at the same time? Or is it one application at a time? I, I think in, in general, I can't speak for all of the provinces, but there is leeway to have, you know, one, two or three uh, donors, I think, in most provinces. Obviously, there has to be a, a limit, you know, it does, it does take up a lot of resources. It is a lot of tests and a lot of time. Um, but, you know, out of three donors, for example, a lot of times there, there may well be one or two or maybe all three will be very good candidates. Dr. Moser, I very much appreciate your time and chatting about kidney donation and how one, one can be a living kidney donor. So I do appreciate all your time and talking about this and raising the important 
importance of uh, highlighting organ donation. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me.